Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. H's Electrostatic Rules. We're going to talk about some gravitational and electrostatic similarities, some analogies, and how excess charges behave. First, let's think about how gravity interacts. If you have matter, it's going to attract other matter. Gravitational force is always an attractive force. Gravity pulls inward from every direction, so your gravitational field created by one mass, say the Earth, is going to cause other masses, wherever they are, to come towards the Earth. Whee! Electric charges interact with other electric charges. Say, for example, if you have a negative charge, that's going to attract positive or opposite charges, and it's going to repel like charges. So a negative charge is going to have its own field. We call it an electric field, which is kind of similar to a gravitational field, except it doesn't interact with mass, but it interacts with electric charge. If you place a positive charge in that field, likewise, it's going to fall along those field lines. And if you have like charges, they're going to repel each other. So they would go the opposite direction of the electric field. They're going to run away. Both gravitational fields and electric fields operate in three-dimensional space, and I want to know how their strength varies with distance. Wah! Of course nobody wants to hear that. Why would you stand next to a screaming person? You would get as far away as you can because you don't want to deal with that kind of intense volume. Sound intensity, just like gravitational field strength, just like electrostatic field strength, they operate in three dimensions. So what you receive at your position with your ear compared to the total energy emitted is going to be a proportion. And as you get further away, your ear stays the same size, but the front of energy is now at a bigger bubble. If you get twice as far away... Uh, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, so if we square 2r, you're really 4 times as big of a bubble there. So you're receiving 1 fourth of the intensity just by going twice as far away, and that's how you get the 1 over r squared relationship. Same thing for gravity, same thing for electric field. And because these two phenomena operate so similarly, their equations are very similar. Both have the inverse r-squared relationship, as we talked about. Both operate as a product of either the two masses or the two charges, and both have a constant of strength. We know from Newton's laws that you need two interacting bodies to have a force, but in order to have a field, you just need one body. So take away a mass, take away a Q, you're left with a field. And lastly, let's think about energy. Work is done as a product of force and displacement. In this case, displacement would be R. So if we just multiply both forces by R, then we get two equations for potential energy due to gravity and potential energy electrostatic. Now let's talk about things falling. Things will fall if they have potential energy and they have a nice medium to fall through. For example, air. Air is a great medium to make this bowling ball fall. Air is not going to stop that bowling ball. It's very conducive to releasing that gravitational potential energy. For electrostatic charges, however, air is not a very good conductor, and it's not going to be easy to move around in air. It's going to be much easier to move around in a conductive metal. So given the opportunity to move, it's going to move where it wants to. And speaking of having potential to fall, these electrons want to get the heck away from each other. They're falling outwards. Say we have two conducting spheres of identical size. We give one of those spheres an excess charge of three electrons, and the other one has an excess charge of one electron. Think about what might happen if those two spheres came into contact. You guessed it. 
those chargers are going to want to spread out as much as they can. So we're going to have an even distribution of two excess charges each. Notice total charge is conserved, and the flow of electrons favored decreasing electric potential energy, just like if they were falling. What if one of the conducting surfaces is bigger than the other, and they both have the same amount of charge? The charges on the right are a lot closer together than the charges on the left, so they really don't want to be next to each other as much. If we bring these together, they're going to want to distribute themselves, again, as far away from each other as possible, and then you're going to have more charge on the larger sphere and less on the smaller sphere. If you brought them back close to each other again, there's no need to exchange charges, there's no need to fall. There's no potential difference. For one final example, let's consider what happens when we approach infinity. Certainly these two charges don't want to hang out with each other, they're going to push each other as far away as possible. And as they get further and further away, we already know about the 1 over r squared rule for their field and for their force, but what happens to energy? As r goes to infinity, the potential energy term turns into zero. And just to make things interesting, let's consider a positive charge at infinity and a negative charge at zero at the origin. What's the energy now? What's the potential energy now? So we gotta think that they're going to attract each other, and it might take a very, very long time but eventually it's going to pick up a ton of kinetic energy and come crashing back to the origin with an incredible rate of speed. That whole entire time, if we think about the work done and the force that was applied during that time, kq1, q2 over r squared, which I'll write as an integral of f dot r dr, from infinity to zero, and when we do that, we're going to get natural log of r from infinity to zero, and the solution to that is, oh my goodness, infinity joules of energy, that's crazy! Well, I hope you enjoyed this session of electrostatics with Mr. H. Physics. For more physics content, see my website. There is a link in the description. Enjoy your studying.